A stern warning tonight from Senator Lindsey Graham. He says that if the super committee fails, the triggered cuts would shoot the Defense Department in the head. And he says that he will not allow that to happen. Senator Graham joins us. Well, Senator, nice to see you. And we are sort of winding down to the clock. Um, Thanksgiving yes. is sort of the uh, day we're all fixated. $1.2 trillion over 10 years. Are they remotely close? Well, I hope so. The Republicans had a major breakthrough. We put $500 billion of new revenue. We don't. What's new revenue from? Uh, where, where do you get uh, it? Uh, we're selling land. We're increasing fees that the federal government charges. And we're eliminating deductions and loopholes that we give to the few at the expense of the many, and, and we're applying that to the debt. All right, when you say fees, is that like a, a, a called fees? Is it a tax? Well, uh, you charge for a service. That so you, you so use. there is yeah. it's not so there is an increased tax for some service. What's yeah, the service? It, Any idea what the service is? Uh, I don't know what the committee's come up with. It's like two hundred and fifty billion dollars of selling land that we own, getting better lease rates. But where's when this we, fee? We, I'm interested in the fee because look, the Republicans have said that we're not going to raise taxes. You're an oil company. You want to buy a lease from the from the United States government to drill. It's going to cost you more. Okay. And the only reason I do is because it's sort of a game Washington plays is that the, ra the Republicans uh, will raise fees and call it, uh, and not call it fees when it's a tax well, or whatever. Well, it's money that's going to go into lowering tax rates for the rest of us and paying down debt. But here's the problem. Anytime you do a deal in Washington where you raise taxes, it always winds up with more spending. We're not going to do that until you control spending. All right. Now, if in the event that they can't come to the if deal, they fail. the two parties, then there's this automatic trigger that comes into effect and are going to be cuts to oh, defense wow. yes. and an entitlement. And you say that you will not permit the defense Here's to get Here's what happens. Cut. If the super committee fails to meet their targets, then a trigger, a sequestration takes in place where $600 billion is automatically taken out of the Defense Department, $600 billion is taken away from Medicare for doctors and hospital payments. If you think it's hard to find a doctor now to serve Medicare patients, take $600 billion more out of Medicare. You think our military is going to be pushed uh, the way we're trying to cut the budget today, take $600 billion more out. I asked uh, Secretary Panetta, what would it mean to the United States military if we cut the military by 600 billion over the next decade on top of the 400 billion we're already trying to achieve in savings he said I said, would, it, would we shoot ourselves in the foot? He said, no, Senator, we'd shoot ourselves in the head. We would destroy the military. I'm not going to let that happen. All right. Now, it's because the, the uh, government couldn't come to a deal on yeah. the, and the debt ceiling last August. So it was sort of kicking the can down the road to November and it. with this, this budget act. So now, right. let's say we, there's, there's no deal come Thanksgiving. And now Senator Graham says, he says it's not going to happen, but there's an automatic uh, trigger. Well, the What's tr your plan? Well, the triggers are pulled in January 2013. This is a typical Washington. And deal. You know, if you can't meet your targets in Jan uh, November, December of 2011, the triggers come into place in the new Congress, January 2013. So not for a year, not for 14 months? Yeah. <laughs> and so here's yeah. what Senator Graham will do in the next 14 months try to replace the triggers. I try to find a way to save $1.2 trillion. Uh, and not gut the Defense Department. I wouldn't just say, don't pull the trigger on defense. I'd take the Defense Department off the table and try to find a new way to save the $1.2 trillion without gutting the Defense Department. That's so what I would do. The whole point of the trigger, though, was to put to a... Make them do, to right. make people do their job, to put a gun to the head of which Congress. Was kind of a, which was a good idea, it, but I'm a Republican. Wait, wait a second, but if, if, the, if the trigger isn't going to go into effect for 14 months, kind of what, kind of, what kind of pressure well, is that? Well, it's not that much pressure, but... I'm I'm a Republican who believes that national security is the number one obligation of the federal government. I'm disappointed in the Republican Party allowing the Defense Department to be put at risk. Ronald Reagan believed in peace through strength. I don't think the party of Ronald Reagan would have ever allowed the Defense Department to suffer if a politician couldn't come up with a target in terms of cutting spending the way this deal does. All right, well, I got two things. I don't like the Defense Department being uh, sort of short-sheeted when it needs it. I don't like people who need Medicare being short-sheeted yeah, when they you. need it. And the whole reason is because last August, the deficit ceiling fight when the when yeah. the White House and the, and the House and the Senate couldn't figure out you how to do it. You know what I'm going to so, uh, so, yeah. If we can't hit our targets, we need to come up with a new way to find savings. How about cutting congressional pay by 10 percent? How about making all of us suffer, not just the Medicare people and the Department of Defense? How about an across-the-board cut where everybody has to feel some pain if we can't get our act together? Senator, thank you, sir. You're not going to be thank very you. popular with that. but. <laughs>